and welcome to Green the Art Space. My name is Kimberly Hawking and I'm the director and curator here. We're having this online opening event because of COVID-19 and we just want to take a moment to acknowledge all of the people, our friends, family, and community members who have been affected by this. We want to say we're thinking of you and we hope that this brings you a bit of joy to your home. Tonight we're going to be seeing the exhibit Native American Art, Traditional, Contemporary, and Beyond. This is a culmination of um, a series of talks that we had on YouTube. These talks focused on the subjects of pottery, gourd work, storytelling, and beadwork. So if you'd like to see these at a later date, you can go ahead and look at greentheartspace.org. So tonight, you're gonna hear from some of our board members. You'll get a blessing from Native American named Tina Calderon. I'm trying to do the accent on that. Uh, next, we're gonna do a walkthrough of the actual exhibit so you'll get to see the pieces. We encourage you still to come in and see them in person because they are amazing. I think you'll really, really love them. And during the exhibit, you will hear from some of our artists. We'll have some clips of videos in there of them. Thank you so much for joining us and take it away, Cheyenne. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cheyenne Grandi. I'm a marriage and family therapist and an art therapist, and I proudly serve as the art therapy liaison on the Greenlee Art Space Board. We are a 100% volunteer run, 501c3 nonprofit organization. Our mission is focused on enriching lives and cultivating community through art. This is accomplished by creating contemplative art shows, as well as offering a space for art making, mentoring, and art therapy. We work in collaboration with other nonprofit organizations, artists, and art collaboratives like Neshkanukit with the goal of bringing us all closer together and further inspiring the arts. I would like to extend a thank you to the Alliance for California Traditional Arts for their Living Cultures Grant and to the California Arts Council for the Relief Grant, both of which made our series of workshops focusing on Native American artists this past year, as well as this exhibit possible. I would also like to say thank you so much to Nesh Kanukit for partnering with us to create this beautiful exhibition Native American art, traditional, contemporary, and beyond. I also want to thank our supporters who provide donations to make shows like this one possible. And if you would like to provide a one-time or ongoing contribution, you can visit our online store at greenleeartspace.org. It is exciting for me to be part of Greenlee's nurturing and accepting community with you and to collaborate with my fellow board members to support shows like this. Next, I would like to introduce you to my fellow board member, Lupita, who brings her heart and thoughtfulness to her role of Director of Hospitality. She's going to share about a special project we're working on to express our gratitude to those who do contribute. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Cheyenne. My name is Lupita Gomez and I'm the Director of Hospitality for Greenlee Art Space. As things have changed since COVID, we shifted and changed to make sure everyone stayed safe. We created subscription boxes to bring a bit of hospitality in a few different ways. For our monthly donors, we have the Theo box. In the personalized box, our donors receive art supplies, an artist print, and several special treats. Donors, donors will receive a new box every six months. Please visit our website at greenleeartspace.org to subscribe as a monthly donor. Then when you visit Greenlee to see the show in person, you would receive the gratitude box. That contains a few art supply items and it's our special way to say thank you for visiting in person. We would like to thank all of our individual donors and our monthly donors for all your support. We truly appreciate it and we couldn't do it without you. Thank you for being with us today. Hello relatives. Tino Orduno Calderon. I am Tina Orduno Calderon, Gabrielino Tongva, Ventureño Chumash, and Yoeme. And I'm going to start by acknowledging my relatives, past, present, and emerging, the original Tarahatam, or peoples of Tobangara. 
And Tobana today is known as Los Angeles County, Riverside County, parts of Orange County, parts of uh, San Bernardino County, as well as the four Southern Channel Islands. I just give so much gratitude to my ancestors for their teachings of living in harmony and reciprocity with the lands here and across our large unceded territory. We remember the ancestors. We thank our elders and our teachers. We stand with our children and the seven generations to come. And I'm going to be offering today our Mother Earth song in the Tongva language. And I like to remind everybody to please walk gently upon our Earth Mother. And as I sing this song, let's give her so much gratitude for everything that she provides for us so that we may, might survive. to the exhibition. First we have this piece by Valena Desmukes. It's Hidden Figures number four. This is a digital color photo illustration and Valena was a part of our storytelling panel. Next we have this piece by Peggy Fontenot titled Indian Land, which is a black and white photograph. Peggy is part of our bee work panel, but she's also a storyteller. Next, we have Hidden Figures 5 by Valena Desmukes. My name is Valena Broussard Desmukes. I was born in St. Louis, Missouri, and traveled out to California in 1960 to seek my fortune as a teacher. Well, yes, that... <laughs> And that was an interesting experience. Um, I decided to um, take some images of Native American people and reproduce them in multiples on an image that would in, look like a rug. And so um, at first glance, you would say, oh, that's nice colors there. That might be an interesting picture of a rug. But if you look deeper there, or you can see the Indian figures there. And so I, as I began to look back at this particular project, I came to realize that what I was really talking about is the Indian artisans who have created rugs, who often are dismissed, their artwork is celebrated, but they as people are not. And so uh, that's the name of the hidden figures for that series of six photographs and photo illustrations that I've done. And as we pan in closer, you'll see that there are actually hidden figures in these pieces that look like rugs. Coming around, we have another hidden figures, which we'll pan up on by Valena Desmukes. It's hidden figures two. We 
Next is another photograph by Peggy Fontenot. This is Pura Fe. And now two more, Hidden Figures 3 and Hidden Figures 1 by Valena Desmukes. Next, we have Zuni Corn Maiden Teapot by Marie Cheatham. After that, we have Kiowa Battle Dress Lady Teapot, also by Marie Cheatham. And Marie was part of our pottery panel discussion. Now we come to a piece by Corey Stein, who was part of our uh, panel discussion on beadwork. This is titled Submerged Pipeline. These are hand-sewn beads on felt. Next, we have a piece by Rowan Harrison, who is also a part of our pottery panel discussion. And this piece is on loan from the collection of Gail Werner. Thank you, for, thank you Gail, for loaning this to us. All right, here we have a piece titled Plates and Bottle Caps, also by Rowan Harrison. Hello everyone, my name is Rowan Harrison. I am half Pueblo of Isleta on my mom's side and half Navajo on my dad's side. This piece represents two large plates that are handmade and hand painted using black and green underglaze. The pieces are ordered with rusty bottle caps that were found just outside of Barstow, California. Next, we have this piece by Matthew White Bear McMasters, and it's titled After the Battle. It's almost completely made out of gourd, except for this, which is buffalo hair, or buffalo fur, sorry. <laughs> All right, let's see. This next one is from Belena Desmukes. Um, this is Red Black 3, Dawn Little Cloud Davenport. And it's a sepia tone gelatin silver print. Next, also by Valena, we have Red Black One, Micah Fitzpatrick. Here we have a mask by Marie Chitha. The title of it is Ghost Mask. All right, next we have, by Corey Stein, two girls on the beach playing with tar. And this is hand-sewn beads on felt. Next we have Rowan Harrison, and this is also on loan from Gail Werner. This is a Original pen and ink drawing on tone paper by Rowan Harrison, and it's titled Wandering Aimlessly. Now, Corey Stein, this is Angelita Torres, and it's part of the Seri Weavers of Mexico series. I'm from Van Nuys, California. My mom's from Wrangell, Alaska, and my dad's from Brooklyn, New York. Um, she was one, she just died two years ago, just passed away two years ago. And there's um, the weavers that make the baskets that I always meet up with down from Mexico. 
and they come up to the Autry every year and sell their baskets, sell their weavings. And this was their, their boss senior woman. And I took a picture of her. I took a picture of all of them and they have the best, they make the best work and they're so gorgeous just looking. And I haven't done, a, I have a lot of more pictures I would like to do of their family. And so this is a picture of her. And so the next year they all came and took pictures of it. Next we have this Comanche Lady Teapot by Marie Cheatham. After that, we have a Muscogee Creek Lady Teapot that was made to honor Marie Cheatham's mother. Hello, my name is Marie Cheatham. I am from Oklahoma. My mother was Muscogee Creek, born in Willica, Oklahoma. My father was Charles Pershing Hatcher, born in Wetumpka, Oklahoma. He was Choctaw. After the conquest, uh, ladies had trade cloth to make their uh, garments out of. And they did that instead of using animal skins. And um, they would make beautiful uh, dresses and tops and embellish them with ribbons. And they, they always wore a white apron and embellished it with long ribbons. And she's wearing a dance crown also. Um, I made this in a tribute to my mother. And at the end of the wall here, we have another black and white photograph by Peggy Fontenot. It's titled Indonis. All right, this piece of beadwork by Corey Stein is titled Pony Express Goes to the Opera. Next, we have Untitled Plates by Rowan Harrison. And this is mixed media. It has ceramic, metal, screws on wood panel. Next, we have this 14 color serigraph on a archival quality fine art paper by Kimberly Robertson and it's titled In Aunties We Trust. Kimberly was part of our beadwork panel, so you're gonna see her beadwork shortly. All right, here we have some assorted pottery pieces by Anna Rodriguez, and Anna is a part of our pottery panel discussion on YouTube, and these are clay fired in a yucca fire. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Anna Gloria, AKA Marta. I'm from San Jose de la Sorra, a community in, uh, in Baja, California. And uh, I learned making uh, pottery with my, with my mom, my grandma, and my great grandma. And then uh, I just, you know, going when I was a little girl, going up to the mountains, collecting the clay and then grind it. And, you know, do the, the whole process. Traditional community, traditional, we use uh, the red ochre to put the signs on the pottery. So it's not, not, not too many people are doing that. So I'm like trying to incorporate this now. So, you know, people uh, start doing more pottery with the signs with the, using the red ochre and stuff like that. And I think it's important to bring them back that tradition. Next we have Kimberly Robertson and she has done this piece titled Beadwork. It's a three colored serigraph with beads. Next also by Kimberly Robertson is this piece. It's a mixed media collage also with beads that's titled Not Enough Sage. All right, and here we have a display that was put together. We got to go, I got to go with my son down to um, near San Diego area to meet with 
our artist Colleen Smith, who actually lives in Hawaii a good part of the time. And Colleen um, was really wonderful loaning these, these items that are really very special and are part of his everyday life and are he considers part of his family. They tied tea leaves around them, which we put inside of them after we got them here, um, to be able to offer some forms of protection. So it was really special that he allowed us to have these in the show. So I'm gonna go over what types of things these are. Um, so this is um, Ipu Heke Ole. It's a jute cordage gourd. Next we have this Ipu Heke, which is a two-chambered percussion instrument for hula. And just a few minutes you'll he get to hear um, Kaleem talk about his gourds and his wife will play on an instrument very similar to this for us. Um, we were able to bring this piece. It was actually growing on his vine when we were there outside of his house. Uh, this is a picked Hawaiian gourd and it's in the process of drying out. Um, the skin will naturally mold and rot away, leaving behind the hard structure. And then this is a dried gourd. Um, we've got a gourd bowl here and the design on the top represents the volcanic terrain of Hawaii. This bowl in particular has been used to store loose change. So these are very much a part of their everyday lives. And then this is a gourd rattle, which you can see um, it has um, kukui nut tree, palm tree seeds, and on the top is a bird design. And then over here we have a couple of small gourds. So these are obviously haven't been dried out. And the last thing I want to point out, we can just move back over to this gourd here. This is a cave design. It's to represent a cave. Hi, I'm Colleen Smith, and um, I wanted to uh, give an introduction to some of the things that I brought for you to see at the Greenlee Art Space. And um, anyway, um, I've been doing gourd work for many years now, and a lot of it I really consider a uh, craft more than art, but I guess it's that intersection when the craft becomes beautiful and people consider it art. Um, so many of the, the things that you see that I have on display are basically uh, things that we actually use or have a specific purpose in our daily lives. and. Um, and uh, I wanted to also introduce you to some of the motifs that I use in my work. This is a gourd, um, and it's an ipuheke ole with this very specific design um, that represents the volcanic nature of the land that um, I have here in Hawaii. And um, however, I do come from California, and um, I'm Native American, so we make rattles for our tribal songs out there. And um, my wife is Native Hawaiian, so a good um, a good collaboration was to be making for me to make her her drums for hula. And so here we go. This is Kahele Lani. She's gonna do a example of the music that we make with the ipu that I make. No luna e kahale kai no kama alava. No luna e kahale kai no kama alava. Nana kama kaya mo nani kale huale. Nana kama kaya mo nani kale huale. Oh ho ike kai. Oh mali uwe. Oh ho ike kai. Oh mali uwe. Iku ala kare kuwa ila ila e ala e ala e a. And Kaleem was obviously part of the gourd panel. All right. Uh, here we have a beaded sampler from Peggy Fontenot. We've made our way around the gallery. We're getting closer to the end, but we still have some fun things to look at. 
This is a piece by Nadia Little Warrior. It's called Gourd Gallery 2. Hi, I'm Nadia Little Warrior. Um, uh, my mother gave me that name Little Warrior when I was born at four pounds, eight ounces, and she was 15. So I always like to credit my mom for my awesome name. She was afraid I wouldn't make it. So she wanted to make sure I had a name that would carry me through life. I'm a gourd artist. I'm Potawatomi tribal role. All my grandmothers were Potawatomi women. I'm also Irish, Welsh on my maternal grandfather's side. On my paternal grandfather's side, I'm also Nez Perce. He was Nez Perce. And although I didn't get to meet him, I've had wonderful uh, stories from my mom about him. Um, I love when I meet the gourd people because they're really loud and noisy when I first see a bunch of gourds. I, I, I have to kind of calm myself down and and pay attention to because they really do. I, I can hear them. They're excited and I'm excited when we meet. And and, you know, I listen to them. I, and I teach people when I do teach classes, I teach people that you need to hear things you've never heard before, see things you've never seen before and have an open mind and heart so that you can be with them. And Nadia Little Warrior was part of our board panel discussion. Next, next we have this beautiful mask um, that's made of glass, glass beads, dentalium shells, and ribbons. And the title of it is Honoring the Ancestors. And Karina King was actually part of our pottery panel um, as she's working with this kind of more contemporary media of glass work. I am beyond amazed at the traditional form that we take these basket designs from. So I'm hoping to honor my ancestors in using their designs in a very contemporary medium. But I've had people come up to me and ask if my designs are from Mexico. I've had people ask me if my designs are from the Southwest. I mean, I've had all kinds of different questions because nobody knows about Northern California. Next up here, we have a gourd piece by Matthew White Bear McMasters titled Walking the Red Road. Then we have Hummingbirds in Black and White by Nadia Little Warrior. And then also by Nadia, we have Golden Oak Copper River. And there's a surprise inside of this one. Here we have Frog Hand Bowl by Karina King, and this is made out of glass. And now we move on to this display of beadwork, and we want to thank local artist Lizette Derry. She is actually a um, jewelry artist, and she loaned us these beautiful jewelry cases to keep these very safe and secure. So thank you so much, Lizette, for your help and um, for your contribution. All right, so now this first one is a Fauci mask by Corey Stein. Next we have Damn She the One by Kimberly Robertson. Hello, my name is Kimberly Robertson, and I am a citizen of the Muscogee Creek Nation. All I would say about the Lizzo piece is like that brings me so much joy. Um, and that's like when I sometimes, you know, sometimes I just, I, I don't want to bead about such heavy things in my stories. I want to bead like for fun, and I love Lizzo, so I made that. <laughs> and finally here, we have 100 Strand Necklace by Peggy Fontenot. It's a 100 Strand Necklace. 
And the reason it's 100 strands is because I used to do the jewelry for the Kathy Ireland Sports Illustrated calendars. And they wanted to have a beaded piece and I had to come up with something that would cover her because this was the top of her bikini. So this is not the original, but that is where that design was born. So my designs come from all different uh, ideas and circumstances. And I actually, um, I'm a silversmith as well, and I made her a sterling silver beaded bikini. It didn't make the calendar, but it made the video of the making of the Kathy Ireland uh, Sports Illustrated swimsuit calendars. <laughs> and I guess it's not finally. We actually have a few more things to look at. We'll turn down the middle of the gallery. All right. So we have three pieces here that are all by Matthew White Bear McMasters and they're completely made from gourds. So this one, which I'm gonna have Dave move around and pan in on, is Moon Over the Monuments. Here we have swooping in. And finally, we have Ama Gnida, which is water is life. Hello everyone, my name is Matthew White Bear McMasters. I am a, a gourd artist, uh, also work in other materials, but gourd has been my passion and my kind of lifeblood since I was a teenager. Uh, this one is called Ama Ganida, which means water is life in Cherokee. And so what I did was I created a gourd that looked like a, a water vessel and what you can't see is there's actually, I've got carved water symbols all around this gourd. And I wanted to make it look like an old uh, fire clay, uh, fired clay pot. And so that's why the different texture, different look of that color, pouring the water as it flows down uh, onto this wood, which everything depends on the water to live and this wood would have been one of the items and so i created with still some of that texturing the uh, water flowing as it runs off and sprays and then uh, as you get the everything has a spirit i represented that here uh, i kind of ghosted a, a face in there of the spirit of that water as she kind of flows around Well, you've seen all the artwork that's on the walls and in the gallery, um, but one more thing that we have is kind of a neat thing for you. If you do come into the gallery, you can sit in a little theater that we've made up in our back room and see some pieces of storytelling. We have Dennis Garcia, who is a very traditional storyteller, and we're going to show you a few of his stories after this. And then we also have a few films from Camila de los Santos. So we're excited to share those films with you. Haku, Hamanatan, Lutuan Dennis Garcia, Basekba Nukachin. I said hello in Shumash and hello to everyone in, in my Fernando Nino Tatavium language. And I said, you know, I'm Dennis Garcia and I'm from the San Fernando Valley. Uh, this is my brother's favorite story. It's a story about a um, Muhu the owl and Hoos the bear. Well, 
a long, long time ago, when all the creatures were made, Mahu the owl was the most beautiful bird of all. He had silky feathers from the top of his head all the way down to his tail. He had beautiful almond-shaped eyes. He had a proud regal beak that stuck out from his face. And he also sang beautiful, beautiful songs. Well, who he liked was kind of full of himself. He liked a lot of compliments and, you know, people make, you know, pay attention to him. So he knew where all the traffic was going to come through that day. He went to the crossroads and he sat in a tree. And he started to sing his beautiful songs. Well, up comes Squirrel. He puts his little paw to his ear because he hears something. And he looks up in that tree at the crossroads. He says, oh, Mahu. Oh, he says, look at you. Look how beautiful you are. Oh, those silky feathers. Oh, and that voice. Oh, your songs are so beautiful, so beautiful. Well, Mahu, being full of himself, he would just kind of lean over that branch and go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I know, I know. So, well, Squirrel heard enough, and he'd go on his way. And then here'd come Rabbit. And the same thing would happen. All of a sudden, he'd get close to that tree, and he'd put his little paw to his ear, and he goes, and he'd look up, and he says, Oh, Mahu, that's you. Oh, your songs are so amazing, so beautiful, so melodic. Oh, and look at those. Look at those eyes, and look at that proud, noble beak sticking out of your face. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Mahu would just look down from his branch again and say, mm-hmm, I know, I know, I know. Well, this happened throughout the day, though, the animals coming by complimenting Mahu on his beauty and his songs. And he would just lean over his branch and say the same thing ever, over and over again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I know, I know. Well, a little while later, here comes Mahu, who's the bear? And he's kind of lumbering along and he's kind of old and, you know, he's little flea bitten. He doesn't hear as well as he used to. And, you know, he doesn't see as well as he used to. But as he gets close to that tree, he starts to hear these, these songs. And he looks up and he goes, oh, oh, is that you? Oh, he says, oh, oh, as I got closer, I could hear you much better. He says, oh, your songs up. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. He says, oh, and look at those almond shaped eyes. They're like pools of water. They're almost hypnotic. Oh my goodness, oh, just beautiful. He says, oh, look at that proud, noble, regal beak. Oh, look at that, look at, look at oh. I'd love to touch those feathers because they, they look so soft. And he said, to, he, but he wasn't satisfied with just listening to those songs from afar or looking at him from afar. He wanted to feel those feathers on his big bare paw. So he looks up at Mahu and Mahu said, he says, Mahu, why don't you come down here? And let me admire you up close. He says, I would love to feel those feathers on my paw. Well, Mahu, even though he loved the compliments, he looked down at Hoos and he said, I don't think so, Hoos. He says, you want to make an owl sandwich out of me, don't you? Oh, but Hoos said, oh, oh, never, never, never. I would ne never do anything to someone that sounds as beautiful or looks as beautiful as you. Never, ever, ever. He says, you're just too beautiful to to do any of that stuff to. And who would go, I know, I know. So back and forth they bantered. Who's telling Mahu to come down and Mahu's saying, I don't think so. Till eventually, who's wore him down and Mahu's vanity got the best of him. He said, okay, Mahu. She started talking to herself. She said, why shouldn't I let him admire me up close and sing in his ear? So she said, okay, who's put your big bear paws out? She goes, I'm going to come down and land on your, in your big bear paws. So she fluttered down and he landed in big old bear paws of who's. Well, who started to hug her, hug him. And he says, she, she said, he says, oh, she says, I think that's a little tight. Who's, he says, you're starting to crumble my feathers. He says, oh, I can't help it. You feel so good as I'm hugging you. And then he would stroke her feathers, his feathers from the top of her head all the way down to her tail. And he says, oh, that's a little bit rough there, don't you think? Who's, he says, oh, but it feels so good. And who's draws, 
Mahu a little bit closer. And Mahu's going, who's that's a little bit tight? He says, I, 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 I'm starting not to be able to breathe. He goes, oh, but I can't help it. He says, I'm looking into your eyes and they're hypnotic. He says, oh, this, they're, they're amazing. Till finally, she said, who's, please let me go. Please let me go. And he said, okay, but before I do, I want to give you a great big kiss. So he draws her close to him and he goes, mm -hmm. and as he hugs and kisses her tight, boom, the feathers on the top of her head tight start to pop up. Boom, her eyes kind of bug out. And he gives her one last stroke. As he does, he rubs her face and he flattens that beak to her face. So now, if you're out there by those crossroads and try to look up at that tree, you may go a little bit early in the day and you won't see or hear anything. But if you come back maybe a little bit later at dusk, you still may not see her, but you'll hear her. And she's saying, who's, who's, who's did this to me? And that's the story of Mohu and Hoos. So usually we sing a song about this in honor of one of those animals. We'll sing about poor Mohu, and it's called Yamakwiri. And it goes like this. Yamakwiri. Yamakwiri. Hey, Yamakwiri away. Hey, Yamakwiri. Hey, Yamakwiri away. Hey, Yamakwiri away. Hey, Yamakwiri away. Hey, I'm a greedy away. Hey, I'm a greedy away. Hey, I'm a greedy. Hey, I'm a greedy. Hey, I'm a greedy away. Hey, I'm a greedy. Hey, I'm a greedy away. 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 Hey, I'm a greedy. Hey, I'm a greedy. Hey, I'm a greedy away. Hey, I'm a queedy. Hey, I'm a queedy away. 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 Hey, I'm a queedy. Hey, I'm a queedy. Hey, I'm a queedy away. Hey, I'm a queedy. Hey, I'm a queedy away. 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 Oh, I'm a queedy. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the story. Uh, so my name is Camila de los Santos Speed. I am Chickasaw and Choctaw by descent, and I am a Chickasaw tribal citizen. Since I was very young. I was just kind of inspired by, by films and, and filmmaking in general. Uh, my parents were always really, really busy working, so a lot of my time was spent watching films. The way that I come up with films is I kind of think of shots in my head, and I had such a clear vision for that one. I needed it to, you know, be really vibrant and fun and lots of movement, um, and I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. I think that um, a lot of people really connect to it and that was kind of the goal so yeah that's that's kind of how it all came together
joining us for this very special tour of our art gallery and we really hope that you come in at some point to see it in person. You can give a call to my phone number at 562-533-4020 if you would like to come in and make an appointment to see all this artwork in person. Uh, we're so grateful that you joined us tonight. It would be so much fun if we were in person but we'll all just pretend like we're together. Um, I want to thank especially my son Nathan Hawking who helped a ton with many different aspects of this show. Um, he drove with me down to San Diego. He did a lot of the paperwork kinds of things for me and uh, computer things. So thank you so much Nathan for your help. I want to thank my husband David who has done more than you can even imagine from hanging things to uh, doing all of the filming, doing the editing, all of those kinds of things. So thank you, David. Thank you so much to my board for all of your support and all of our donors. We want to thank Nesh Kanuka for partnering with us again to create this beautiful content for you, our community. Um, we're just very, very grateful. So thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, signing off for now, Greenlee Art Space.